Well, good evening. I hope you're joining me tonight uh, live for a fun night with the Christmas Gleaming Bundle. Well, good evening. I hope you're joining me tonight. Oh, I forgot uh, to turn the volume down on this thing. There we go. Sorry about that. So, hey, Tony, how are you tonight? Um, so, we're going to play with the Christmas Gleaming Bundle um, from Stampin' Up. My name's Trish Todd, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator. So all the products you will see me play with tonight are available in my online store. And if you are interested in purchasing them and need help, let me know. If you don't already have a demonstrator, please reach out. I'd love to have you join my team or at least come to my classes. We have a lot of fun and everybody seems to love joining. What's up, Libby? So for those of you that may not know, Miss Libby is the president of my fan club. So I didn't really know that I had a fan club, but apparently I do. So pretty cool, huh? So this is the stamp set I'm going to be playing with tonight. And you can buy it as a bundle and get these two level punches that come with it. So I got a little glare there with the light. I'm still trying to tweak that, so we'll see if that helps. I don't think it did. We'll turn it that way. That may help. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. <laughs> Where did I get the insert for the chamois? So, on the Stamp It Up website, they have the stamp cases in our print lab, Tony. And I just kind of modified it and changed it up for mine. And I've got my little notes on the back. This, this is how I take care of my chamois. Tells me that, you know, not to throw it in the, that you can throw it in the washing machine, just re-wet it, etc., etc. So, any of my customers that buy a chamois from me get a clear case free, plus this insert with it if they want it. And it also has the item number and dimensions and everything on it. And then I can keep up with it when we take it to events by putting my name on it. So it makes it pretty easy to identify mine versus anybody else's. So great question. Thank you for asking. Okay, so I've got two little projects for you tonight. They're both pretty quick and easy. Um, so we're going to play. I've kind of got all my bits already ready here. Nothing real complicated. But like I said, with them being so simple, I felt like two would be a good way to go. And then I'm going to show you kind of the card that I made the other night that kind of inspired these other two. So you can see some flexibility with this bundle. So I've got my bits here to do that to that. That's my inside. So this bundle, this is a suite in the holiday catalog, actually. So there's some beautiful designer series paper. And it's got the copper foil accents to it. And then I've just cut out my copper foil sheet to, ma to match. So my card base is a five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. <clears throat> and it is Knight of Navy cardstock. It's a very lovely, and it is a color that coordinates perfectly with this paper. So if you ever wonder about what colors to get, just match it up to the designer paper that you pick. And you cannot go wrong there, okay? So I'm just going to do a little quick attaching here with my liquid glue just because it's within my reach and I think that it works best on the foil. Uh, okay, so I'm going to turn that over and let that glue get that out of the way. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to do just a little bit of stamping. So I said this is one of those easy cards and this is my Knight of Navy ink pad. So I can always tell by the little blue strip, of course, tells me on the end my name. So just for reference, the little tip that when you buy them, you get the stickers on the back and they're in different languages. So I always take my English and put it on one side. And then I pick another language that might remind me and sound somewhat like English, even though it's not, and stick it on the other side. So if my ink pad goes in my holder the wrong way, I can still see what color it is. And I don't have to try to guess. So just a little tip that works for me and my little craft space. So I'm just going to stamp up this one stamp here. And set that one aside. That's just on the shimmery cardstock. Just a scrap piece that I had laying around. And this is the pretty peacock cardstock. And I am going to stamp this smaller little round ornament shape also in the Knight of Navy, on the peacock. So pretty quick and easy there. And then while I've got my ink pad out, 
I've got a little piece of the shimmery white cardstock and he is cut at one and three quarters by one and a half and I'm gonna take my little sentiment here my deck the halls with balls of ho boughs of holly everybody says that a little different my southern slang probably makes it sound really fun right <clears throat> so I'm just gonna kind of guess in the light here and hold that down for a few seconds I can stamp awesome. Yep, there I am. So yes, you have to say the magic words or it doesn't turn out awesome. So on my insert, I've also got it cut at, wanting to say this is three by four and a quarter. I'm going to take this little image right here again and I'm just gonna kind of stamp him down here. And then I'm gonna stamp my inside sentiment, which is and be jolly this season. And I'm just going to stamp that up here. So now I've got all my stamping done and all my bits done for this card. So I'm going to set my navy aside. I don't need him anymore. So now I've got this. And I'm going to take this piece right here and just to deer it down and deer it down. My southern slang makes it sound like I'm talking about deer, but it's add here. I'm just going to glue that down, let that set for a second. And then I've got another piece of Knight of Navy cut at two and a quarter by three and a half. And I'm just going, actually, I'm going to stamp him. I told you a little fib about being done. So not quite. So I've got this one little decoration in here. <laughs> so I will confess something. I don't actually have a sample in front of me that I'm going by right now. I'm just kind of, I got this design in my head while I go and roughed it out. So I'm just kind of playing as I go a little bit here with a vision in my head with my pieces. So I do have a, an idea. So I'm not going completely blind here, but close. <laughs> so there's that. And I'm just going to attach that down as well. Just a little sloppy gluing. Because I like sloppy glue. <laughs> so thank you, Tony. I'm glad you like that tip. It, it is a great one for sure. <laughs> so I'm going to attach my little sentiment down over here. And while I can, I'm just going to go ahead and put my inside in. Now make sure you open your card up the right way before you attach your, sen your inside in. Can't tell you how many times I've made what I call left-handed cards or upside-down cards, where if you open them, the inside might not be turned the right way or it may be on the wrong side. Done that several times. I have even been known to put it on the back. So... If you've ever done that, you understand. <laughs> it, it can be quite comical sometimes. So I'm going to take my little punch here that coordinates with this little stamp. And I'm going to pop stamp him, punch him right out by turning my punch upside down. And punch. And send him flying around, right? So then I'm going to do the same with this one. If I can figure out, there's my punch. And I'm going to do it with this larger punch here. Are you calling us lefties backwards? No, I'm not calling you backwards. <laughs> Just So to me, a card opens like a book, like this. But sometimes I have been known to make the card open this way. So to me, that's a left-handed card if you have to open it the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> So, you, it might not actually be a left-handed card, but that's just what I've always called it. So, sorry if it offends you, but I'm sure you still love me. So, I'm going to attach this piece down right here. Then I'm going to take this one right here, and I'm going to pop him up on a couple of dimensionals. And I'm just going to kind of stick him right there. 
And one thing that comes that is a part of this suite is these beautiful little copper accents. I'm trying to find my little packet here. And you get a bunch of pieces in one little packet, right? So you have stars and the reflection. I'm going to try to turn it where it may be not reflection. But you get the stars and these little ornaments and these little twigs. And this is just great little accent pieces to add to your cards. And it's really cheap for all that you get. So really coordinates with the paper and the suite. Just something pretty cool. So I'm going to just apply a glue dot here. And I'm going to just kind of stick him down right in there, I think. And just as another little accent, just to have fun with this, I'm going to find my little tool here. I don't know where my take your pick is. It's buried up in here. We're still trying to unpack from last weekend, I think. And these are just little star embellishments. They're little copper stars. And I'm just going to add a couple of them on here. One, two, and three. I think I'm just going to set that one down there. Just to kind of balance that out. So, and lo and behold, people, this card is done. So tell me, how cool is that, right? Simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and that took us, what, 10 minutes to do. So these are the kind of cards that you can mass produce in a real quick hurry for Christmas if you want to send everybody the same kind of card. And they really turn out really neat and pack a pretty good little wow with the little accents. So I'm going to set that one aside, and I'm going to pull out my next one. And again, these are just really quick and easy, so and we're going to kind of use a similar little layout as we did on the other one. Uh, this time I'm using a mossy meadow card base. I'm looking for, there it is, my bone folder, just to get that crease down good. <clears throat> and I am going to go ahead and clean my stamp here. Because I know that I'm going to need this one again. And this one. And the chamois is perfect for this. Right? Can't go wrong with the chamois. <laughs> he is a great little investment to make. So I'm going to try to remember what I had in my head for this one. I think I've got it. So again, pretty much the same dimensions. Now this is out of that same paper pack. You see the, gold, the copper accents are in here. And again, I've got my copper layer behind it. And again, this is cut at four and a half by three and a quarter. And this one is cut at three by four and a quarter. And it's the same on the other card as well. So you can kind of see how these same measurements work on multiple cards and multiple layouts and get you an awesome different look. <laughs> oh, I still love you too, Tony. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Libby. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> so again, the idea with these that I had tonight was just to show you a couple different ways that you could use the stamp set. A couple different looks that you can get than maybe, and something that you may not have quite seen before as far as a combination goes. And again, I'm just matching up the colors to what's in this designer series paper pack, right? So before I glue that down, I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm going to actually, I've got these over here cut. I think I cut an extra piece because I couldn't remember if I'd cut one or not. It's just been one of those days. If I can get this thing to start turning, it's wanting to get hung up here. There we go. Might have to redo that and that's okay. So I'm just gonna attach that one down wrap him around nothing overly scientific about where i'm putting it just kind of guessing again this is a i'll fix that that'll work its way back whenever it wraps around set that aside put my glue dot there and bring it around right so now i can glue him down right so this card is going to be a horizontal card so more like the book layout than it is the other one, which was landscape. <clears throat> so this is going to be the inside of my card. And let's see if I can remember what I had in mind here. So I've got my cherry cobbler ink pad. 
Now he is not part of the designer series paper. That's crooked and gonna drive me nuts. So, Like I always say, card makers are OCD or else we would buy Hallmark. We don't think anybody else's looks as good as ours or we wouldn't make it ourselves. <laughs> That's why we make our own, because we think they're better. And we don't just think it, we know it. So I'm gonna take, again, the same little p size piece that I did on the last one. This is, again, your shimmery white cardstock. And it is cut at one and three quarters by one and a half. And I'm gonna use that same little sentiment, the deck the halls with boughs of holly. If that's not how you say it, somebody can correct me and my Southern accent may get it right someday, but probably not. So don't hold me to that. So I'm gonna set that there. And I cut myself out an extra little piece of copper on this one. And it's at two inches by one and three quarters, just so it'll layer on there pretty. And I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Just because I think it's how it needs to be. And like I said, this is just kind of an idea in my head. So feel free to play along. Hopefully you'll like it when it's done. So glue dots are gonna be my friend on this one again. So I showed you the little copper accent pieces. I pulled myself out a couple of the little twigs because I just thought that they matched so well on this. So I'm going to stick one here and pull it up. And I'm going to kind of go down here and just kind of eyeball this down there near my little dimensional. Let that hang. Uh, I don't like that going that way. I think whoop. it's just glue and paper. So I'm going to correct myself here and I'm going to go off of that corner up there. Yeah, I think I want it that way. And then this one. I think I kind of want him down there. Stick him there. And before I do that, I pop myself out a little star. Or actually, it's a big star, not a little one. And again, I'm going to just take a glue dot and put that in that center. Stick him down. I'm going to do my knot before I go. So I've got an extra little strip of this ribbon that coordinates. It's the vanilla with the copper. And the little words Merry Christmas is embossed on it in that copper to kind of give it that fun little sheen. It's a really cool little accent and it's very soft cotton ribbon. So it's easy to tie and knot and work with. So I highly recommend it. And I'm not a bow tire on camera, so I'm not going to tie a bow. I'm just going to do myself a little knot here. And then I'm going to take my snips and I'm just going to kind of trim my tails a little bit, try to angle them. And go tighten and twist that up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to take the covers off of these, like I say, so they can show up in the car and driveway and probably even Walmart by the time the night's over. And I'm just going to kind of stick this down right here, I think. Eh, not quite. Let's see if I can pull that up. I'm not sure I like twist that just a little bit. There we go. So there that one is, right? Get my bow down here where it'll look right. And so that's card number two. So see, like I said, two pretty quick, easy cards tonight. I'm going to throw my couple of stars on this one as well. I think I'm just going to stick one here. Oop, if I can turn it the right way. Again, my little bit of crafting OCD kicks in. So there you go. So there's card two that I need to do the inside of. You should have reminded me. Come on, people. You've got to look out for me here. I'm just going to take this. 
and also for the inside there's another image in the stamp set that I haven't pulled out uh, try to find it here in a second I actually think I may have put it up by accident and that's okay mm -hmm. couldn't remember if I needed it so it's gonna be this little holly berry right here I'm going to take this one off the block just because I can and because I want to and I'm going to stamp this in mossy meadow I'm just gonna kind of go up here and then I'm gonna go over here in this corner I don't try to turn my stamp and line it up I just turn my paper it's not glued down so that's the fun in that right so there we go <laughs> And yes, I know it's turned the wrong way, but that's okay. We're going to roll with it, right? Or, well, I could restamp that and turn it that way, couldn't I? Yeah, why don't we do that? Because that's going to, again, my OCD is going to drive me crazy, right? And it wouldn't be a live video if we didn't have some kind of boo-boos. Never guess where I'll find one of those today. The cat little box, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the cat's litter box, I guess is what you mean. Yes, I find those dimensional covers everywhere. I think I have literally found them in the back of my car before and went, how in the world did that happen? So yes, they, they like to show up everywhere. <laughs> so there we go, we'll fix this. Ah, that's much better. So now we can go in there the right way. I'm going to close my ink pad just because my fingers will land in it if I'm not careful and not wanting to. So again, paper has two sides, so I'm able to fix it by just stamping on the other side. Just a quick little glue. And down I go. And I'm going to roll that little piece of glue up that started to go down here. Just take my finger now and scrape that off. I'll take my adhesive remover and get that up in a little bit. I just don't want it sticking in my card. <laughs> and gluing it shut, because that would be fun. Yes, thank goodness there's always two sides. And if you remember from on stage, sometimes there's four sides, right? So these are the two cards that we made tonight. So I hope you liked them. So this one is, I'm going to take it out of the sheet. So this one is, this one, is one that I made for a little shoebox swap that I did for an event last weekend and a couple of you guys may have seen it so this was the original design that I had this was the copper the little punch punched out in the copper foil and I ran that through an embossing folder through my die cutting machine can't say the name of it anymore so that's a different sentiment that's in the, st in the stamp and then that's the ornament again so again just three very simple cards with the same cuts the same designer series paper pack and you can see how the different colors can just really bring that together and really just tie in wonderfully so three totally different looks and they're not overly feminine not over, not really complicated just fun easy and pack a little wow in them on their own right so I'm going to hold up for just a minute and see if anybody has any questions or comments or anything. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you have any other questions or comments, you can leave them here and I will check them later and respond. Um, again, all these products are available in my online store. <laughs> yes, it does make, this suite does make stunning cards with very little effort, Tony. Yes, it definitely does. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy is kind of my mantra anymore. And I like simple sometimes. So we can get overly complex with things. So again, everything's available in my online store. You can check out my blog at trishstamps.com and follow me there. And you can get all these measurements. Lou, hey, I'm so, how are you tonight? Oh, I'm so glad you found me. It's so cool. So we made these two cards tonight. We did the one with the Knight of Navy and this one with the Mossy Meadow. And this one was from the NC Demo meeting the other day. So it was my inspiration that I had made for the shoebox swap. So I thought that I would take that same layout and apply it with the same suite and kind of make two other cards. 
So definitely watch the replay later. <laughs> and uh, let me uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And I hope y'all have a great night. And thank you for joining me. I love all of you. Ta bye. <laughs>